Hello, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge. Today I'm going to dive right in with this wrap up because I read 16 books this month. Crazy. Wow. Um, three of them were on audio. Um, one of them was ebook and the rest were all hardcover. I mean, physical. They weren't all hardcover. Um, so I just want to dive in. As always, I'm going to go from my lowest rated book up to my highest rated book. And I'm going to, um, if it's a book that I talked about in a vlog or in another video, I'm going to link those videos down below just because I don't have time to go into as much detail as I want to. But a lot of these books I talk about in my vlogs as I'm reading them. And so that's a good way to, um, you know, find out more of my thoughts as I was reading them. So without further ado, I'm going to start with my 2.5 rated book this month. And that was Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. Excuse me. This was really tough for me. Um, and I'm really sad that I didn't like it as much as I wanted to, because this is a retelling of East of the Sun and West of the Moon, which if you've been here at all, you know that um, the retelling East uh, is one of my favorite books. And the thing is, is that this author was very heavily inspired by East. Like she says it right in the front. She like dedicates this book to those authors. And I just found that really frustrating for me because I didn't like the way that it was told. Um, so the main difference in this one, the main character, her name is Echo. And instead of being taken to live with a polar bear to save her father's life, she exchanges a year of her life to live with a wolf in his magical castle under the mountain. And this castle needs a keeper and he's training her to be the keeper. Doesn't know what he's training. She doesn't know um, like why he's training her for this, but he says at the end of the year, he'll have to go away and she'll be the one taking care of the mountain and it was interesting I didn't like the house that they were living in I didn't really like the wolf that much and there's a twist as there always is I won't spoil it for you in case you haven't ever read a story that's told like east of the sun and west of the moon but Akatar is also based on that myth um but I didn't like the twist in this so that really just ruined it for me as well as I I didn't like Echo very much. And when you're reading the tale East of the Sun, West of the Moose, Moose, <laughs> or, uh, you know, like it needs to, you need to like the protagonist. You need to like the protagonist in every book, but you really need to like it in this one. And I just didn't. So 2.5 for me. Next, I had three three-star reads. Um, the first one of those was The Disasters, which I read during my um, 24-hour readathon. So I'll link that video. That's where you can find out more about this. Um, this book is about four kids that get kicked out of a military academy, basically, um, only to see a, a, the space station above Earth get attacked. And so they time, they time jump. I can't talk. They... Um, space jump to another colony where they get trapped um and basically it is said that they're the ones who blew up that space station so they need to work together to figure out a way to save earth basically um this had good representation in it um great racial representation as well as the main character is bisexual but as you'll find out in my 24-hour readathon that's all he was thinking about was that you know, it was kind of like, instead of just having one person to fawn over because he's bisexual, there's two people. So there's twice the annoying lovey tropes and there just wasn't time for it. Like this book had a great premise, but the things they were trying to do, like they didn't have time for him to be thinking about boobs or dick every five seconds, which I'm sorry, that's what's happening. He is, because it's from a male's point of view too, I feel like it's twice the, it was just too much for me. So, but you should give it a try if you want to support that because I had high hopes and it's just that this wasn't a situation where your sexuality had the time for it. You know what I mean? Like it was like the earth was crumbling kind of thing. So sorry to this book, but it was three stars. Next is a book I just read yesterday. So you'll see that in my, um, you would have seen that in my blog for this week if you watch my blog. And that is The Raft by S.A. Bonin. This is a book that I've had for quite a while when back this summer I went through a phase of really liking survival novels. Like I read like four or five of them in a couple months. And this is one about a girl who she lives on Midway Island and she was visiting her um, aunt in California, I think. And so she wants to get a flight back and 
she doesn't get entered into the manifest of that flight. Um, and so when the plane crashes, no one knows that she was on it. Um, and yeah, and then it's basically her story of survival. There is a twist in this book and I predicted it immediately. It's only 230 pages. And also I just, I just didn't like it. It wasn't the kind of survival novel that I was looking for. Um, she is trapped on this with, um, a man named Max, who is the only other survivor. And he's, uh, he's not super old or anything, but like he's an adult. And so there's no like hope for romance in this situation because it would have been creepy if, cause she's only 15, but also then, I don't know. They also just don't work together very well. I can't really talk because there's a twist to this as well, like I said, and I'm not going to ruin it, but I just didn't like it and it ruined it for me. So anyway, then my three and a half star read was The Hobbit. I finished this right at the beginning of the month. I've talked about this a lot in December, which was the main month that I was reading it in. Reading this because my friend wants me to read the Lord of the Rings series so that he'll read Harry Potter. Um, I was very bored for a lot of this. I even had it on audio and I eventually had to stop listening and just plow through it because I was getting very bored. Um, the world building is beautiful. I'm super excited to read The Fellowship of the Rings, of the Ring, but I was very bored by this. So that's all I'm going to say. Come at me if you want, but... If you're bored, you're bored. Next, I have... I have eight four or four and a half star books. So this is going to be really fun. I'm going to start with a series that I've talked about so much on my channel. I read books three and four of the Steel and Fire series by Jordan Rivett. Planning to finish this. Excuse me. I'm planning to finish this in the month of February. I have just the fifth book left. I love it. I love Dara and Siv. They're so amazing. As well as Siv's two younger sisters are also fighting political things in different parts of the country. I, I just adore these characters. There's dragons in here. There's dueling. There's working with all the elements. Um, steel and fire and wind and water. And it's really exciting. I've had such a good time reading these books and I'm sad for it to be over. Please support a self-published author, Jordan Rivett. If you love fantasy and you love some elemental magic, you should check these out because it's a great time and you'll also support a self-published author. Next, another book I read like the first day of the year was The Fork, the Witch, and the Worm, which I actually have a full book review and spoilers for. This is a volume of a few short tales in the Allegasia universe. Um, it's about Aragon and Sephira, who it's the Aragon series. You should know about that. Um, so go ahead and check out my full review for this. But I gave it four stars. I had a great time, but it left me just wanting more, which is why it was so bittersweet when I was reading it that I had to give it like a lower rating. And the three tales told, like one of them was I wanted so bad. And then the other two, I didn't really ask for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, whatever, you're writing things, it's cool. And Christopher Paolini's sister actually writes from the point of view of like the character Angela the Witch, who is like named after her. So that's kind of cool. Next book is Tone Deaf by Olivia Rivers. I read this during my 24 hour readathon as well. This book was just. I don't want to call it a cute romance because there's some heavy hitting stuff in here. This is about a deaf girl named Allie Collins who she has an abusive father and she runs away with a rock star who also had an abusive father. So that's it. And there's ASL representation. Um, and it was really fun. That's why I gave it four stars is like, I know that this might be problematic to some people, but isn't any book that has abuse in it going to be problematic for somebody? Like abuse is problematic. It should be problematic. And I just thought that it dealt with like surviving abuse as well as how to get out of it. Um, because Allie, her father is an ex-police chief. So nobody believes her abuse claims and he's made her look crazy. And because she's deaf, she doesn't have great advocates in her life. So... Yeah, I think that it's amazing story as well as the love story was cute. And it's great that a rock star and a deaf girl fall in love. Like, that's cool. That's how you do stuff, people. It was fun. All right, we're moving into my four and a half star books. 
the first one, which I read for Romanceopoly, which I also read Tone Deaf for Romanceopoly too. It was read a rock star romance. Um, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor, Taylor Jenkins Reid. It tore my heart out just like everyone said that it would. This is about a bisexual woman um, and she's telling her memoirs to a girl named Monique, um, which Evelyn, like think if Marilyn Monroe had lived and she was selling her memoir to someone or telling her memoir to someone how intense that would be for you. This is that. And I didn't think that I would like it, but I did. And it's set up that like it's broken up into seven parts and each part is about a husband, which I thought was really cute. I didn't know how they were going to work through cute. Why do I keep using the word cute? It was an interesting way to tell the story. Like cute does not encompass everything, Jen. Anyway, this was heartbreaking and wonderful. Um, and it made me cry so much. Like, whoo, I was not prepared for the tears with this. It was great. It was good. Read it. Just read it. Which is what everyone said to me. And I like ignored them. Um, yes, which I finally finished last night. Which like I was not going to film this wrap up until I finished this book. And I finished Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This is my first Brandon Sanderson book. And I loved it. It was four and a half stars. Um, it jumped right into the story, like page one, there was action going. And then there was this mystery unfolding of like, what's happening. I've talked about this book in so many vlogs because I've been reading it the last week of December and then all of January. So really just check out any vlog during that time. And I'm talking about it. Um, but this is about three different characters, Rayadin, Rathen, and Serene. One of them is a prince who has been exiled into Elantris, which is where people get sent who have a certain disease. Serene is the princess who was supposed to marry Radin, and Rathin is a priest who is sent to save this country from being destroyed by his god, basically. And that's all that I'm going to say. It's way too complicated to get in any deeper without spending a really long time, but it's great. It was his first novel. A lot of people say it's not his best novel, but since it's the first one that I read by him, it's the best novel I've read by him. And I really look forward to more. I actually, I'm about to film a book haul after this, um, which won't go up for another two weeks because I have lots of videos scheduled. Yay for me. I'm ahead for once in my life. Um, but there, he has this short story collection and one of them has an epilogue for Elantris in it. And like, I literally bought the book for that only because it also has like stuff from the other worlds that I'm like, haven't read yet. But I was like, I don't care. I need more Rayadin and Serene and Rayden. So, so good. I read that with Murphy or slash I'm reading it. She's not quite done yet, but I'm so excited to like hear her thoughts because she's read most of Brandon Sanderson, I think. And this was like one of the last ones she hasn't read yet. And so it's really interesting to see it coming from two different perspectives. Someone who's read like all of his works to someone who's read none of them. So that's pretty cool. Next, my four and three quarter star read, which I think I ended up rating it five star on Goodreads, but I did have like a few little issues with it but that is the bear and the nightingale wow i'm so glad i read this i try to play it cool and like i'm reading the next book next month but i really like instantly wanted to pick it up and read it but i'm trying to be good and like finish the other books that i needed but anyway this is about a girl named it's hard to say her name vasya and this book basically takes place during her whole life from age zero to I think she's like 16 or 17 when this book ends. Um, and it's just what's happening in her life. One of the things I love and like I can't go into too much detail. I talk about this in my 24 hour readathon as well. But one of the things I love is the family element of this series. Like she has a pretty big family and they're all like very loving minus her stepmother who is crazy and I don't mean that with disrespect like honestly her stepmother has mental illness and I talk more about that in my 24 hour readathon and why I think like it literally says like her evil stepmother back here but it's like her stepmother has mental illness it's not her fault okay so I just love this it was beautiful it was atmospheric it takes place in Russia um like old-timey old-timey Russia uh and it's so good like mythology and fairy tales and winter kings and and what the bear and the nightingale are is cool figured that out but it's amazing that's enough it's cool 
yeah and now we're on to my five star reads so that's cool so first off i'll talk about um i read this um audible exclusive it's called evil has a name and it is um like an interview collection slash like telling of catching the golden state killer um and i read that because i'm also this book i'm almost done with but i'm filming this a little bit early because i've already read 16 books and you know whatever but i'm also almost finished with i'll be gone in the dark my M michelle mcnamara which was her obsession with finding the golden state killer and she never got to see him caught because tragically she died in her sleep at the age of like 42 or something she died way too young and this book was all of her writings and musings and her husband put it together and put it out um he had some help from some of her like writing partners and things to get it out and so this is five star for me it's fabulous her take on who this guy is and then so then um evil has a name has the investigators as well as the victims um speaking about the conclusion of this and the fact that evil does have a name and it's joseph d'angelo and they caught him and i think that's so cool so i looked at these as kind of like paired up books to me that's an audible exclusive it's like six hours long and it takes you through all the incidents in it through how they actually caught this guy and it's very fascinating and i i hope that a lot of serial killers who think they've just quieted down and are living out their life i hope they are scared to death because they're coming for you just saying so these are both five stars so good i've never been well i guess i've always liked true crime because like i like that kind of stuff but um in my favorites video for next month i'm gonna put in all my favorite crime youtubers because i think it's fascinating all right down to my last two books first i'll talk about the iron flower because because i'm a mood reader slash for the love of it i have two very different like books right here this was five star it's a second book in the black witch chronicles and it's five star because i love the characters i love them i want the best for them i want the evil people to die and like this story a lot of people thought the black witch was a hot mess i didn't i loved it i saw the potential i saw what ellerin was going through and who she was going to become and i was right i was proved right in the iron flower and so i'm glad i didn't give up it was hard to get through because the next book is over a year away from coming out and and I just didn't want to finish it, but I didn't want to forget anything. So I did. Um, this is continuing. Things get dark in this book, guys, like bad things are happening. And I can't really talk too much more than this because it's the second book in a series. But I really think you should read The Black Witch. You should suffer through the pain because the things that you learn in this one and what's going on is amazing. But it, it hurts. So this was a five star whether or not you think the writing style and characters deserve it this book is like my heart and i love ivan and ellerin so much and i want what's best for all these people and so that's why it's a five star and then my final read of the month which wow guys um was bear town by frederick Bachman, which i just put up a review for on friday and wow that review says everything about this, but this is like the exact opposite. This was not a read for fun. This was not a book where, I mean, I did still love the characters in here, but this book was a five star just because respect. Like that's all that I can say. Respect for the author, respect for the dignity he gives his characters, as well as not so much dignity if you're one of them. And I adored it. I cried so much. I think it's so amazing. Um, just in case you haven't heard about it before, it's about a small town named Bear Town in Sweden. Um, and a girl gets raped and she gets raped by the head of a hockey team. And she knows no one's going to believe her, but she still chooses to step out and tell the truth anyway and be brave and courageous. And it's what the town does in reaction to her that will sicken you, but hearten you and ruin your belief in humanity confirm your belief in humanity and then rise you up again at the end and it was soul crushing i don't ever want to read it again but it gets a five star because respect okay all right well that was all 16 books that i read in january i tell me what you think down below tell me what you're excited to read as always thank you for stopping by i make new videos every monday wednesday and friday and you can watch some more right now bye